Welcome back. After its initial strong support of Israel, the Biden administration is now changing its tune. It wants Israel to come to the table and negotiate a ceasefire, with President Biden calling Israel's military conduct in Gaza over the top. And now the press secretary of the US Department of Defence, Major General Patrick Ryder, has expressed hopes that Hamas will do the right thing for the Palestinian people. Do you anticipate that Hamas will try to fire on the, on the operation, on the causeway? Um, you know, look, I mean, that's certainly a risk, um, again, but if the, the, uh, if Hamas truly does care about uh, the Palestinian people, uh, then, again, one would hope that this international mission to deliver aid to uh, people who need it uh, would be able to happen unhindered. He hopes a group of bloodthirsty terrorists will do the right thing. He hopes Hamas, who use Palestinian children as human shields, will do the right thing. Joining me now is former strategist to President Trump and host of America First, Dr. Sebastian Gorka. What do you make of Major General Patrick Ryder's comments there? Well, before I erupt uh, with regards to the Major General, let me just say, Rita, I have been a fan for many years. When I'm preparing for my three hours of daily radio or my weekly TV show on Newsmax, I just say, find out what Rita said. We'll use a clip of hers. Uh, God bless you for what you do, especially when it comes to the senile old git in the White House. Um, on my radio show today, I, I just unleashed against this man. That's a two-star general who hopes mm. that terrorists won't shoot at U.S. troops and sailors and when we build this la-la land, crazy idea of a peer on sovereign Israeli territory to bring aid to the Gazans. I mean, seriously, if we were back in the White House, President Trump would tell the Secretary of Defense, walk downstairs and rip those two stars off that cretin and that imbecile, because to say, we hope the bad guys won't shoot at us is, is beyond anything a second lieutenant should say. Well, this is the case. Uh, the, the, Hamas won't do the right thing by the Palestinian people, let alone US servicemen and women. I mean, the, the, the whole notion is so divorced from reality, but it's not just the Pentagon spokesman who has a high hopes for Hamas. Here is Dr. Bonnie Jenkins, the Under Secretary of State for Arms Control and International Security Affairs, expressing how much she'd love to see a Palestinian state, despite having absolutely no idea who would lead it. Have a listen to this. You're here representing support for a Palestinian yes. state, correct? Yes, yes. Have you analyzed that support objectively? Yes. Who would you assess would lead that Palestinian state? You could name a group, but I'm saying Hamas, Palestinian Authority, Fatah, some other group. Who would lead it? Um, I think that has to be uh, something that's considered. But I think I would have to have a little. I, I would. I don't. I don't feel comfortable saying that without. Have you not more assessed what group yes. would lead it? Have you or have you not assessed who would become the leader of that Palestinian this is part, state? I, this is part of a larger discussion. Don't even say who it is. Just answer. Have you assessed it? Have there's you assessed an, who would lead there, it? Put it this way, there, there will be an assessment of this question within the U.S. government. <laughs> I don't know where to start. Uh, what do you say to that? How are these people so unprepared and, frankly, clueless about what they're advocating for? That woman fell off the top of the stupid tree and hit every branch on the way down. I wouldn't trust that woman to make me a cup of coffee or to walk my dogs. I mean, this is, this is the perverse situation we find ourselves here in America. The greatest nation on God's green earth, the greatest military anyone has ever seen. And we're run by people who hate the nation, who are arrogant, who are ideologues, but are also dense are really stupid. Now, that person is in a position of authority. It's like the national security advisor, Jake Sullivan, this pencil-necked dweeb who you know was given noogies in high school. And he's the national security advisor who just before October the 11th writes this 4,000-word article in, America, in foreign affairs saying, 
oh, the Middle East hasn't been this peaceful for 40 years. And then we have the greatest mm. slaughter of innocents since the end of the Holocaust, since the end of the Shoah. And guess what? I'm sure you know this, Rita. Foreign affairs, left-wing, you know, rag, allowed the National Security Advisor to go back into the website and delete the passage where he said, everything's great, and Biden stabilized <laughs> the Middle East. It's like George Orwell, your memory holding, your memory holding the truth about what Biden has created in the Middle East. It's Ukraine, it's Middle East, it's disasters in Afghanistan. That's because these people are cretins and they're also arrogant. Well, this is something that President Trump never got uh, the credit he deserved. Uh, he's dealings uh, across the board when you look at whether we're talking about North and South Korea, the Middle East, China, uh, the Russian-Ukraine issue. When he was in the White House, all those areas were in much better shape than they are now. The Biden White House's uh, foreign affairs disasters are too many to mention here, starting with the Afghanistan, the botched Afghanistan withdrawal, which, again, there was really no accountability for that, was there? Not only was there no accountability, the Secretary of Defence, Lloyd Austin, who recently just disappeared for three weeks and didn't tell anybody that he's going into hospital, on the floor of the Congress, when asked about the disastrous surrender of Afghanistan, the 13 servicemen and women who were murdered by ISIS at Kabul airport the day we left, he said, quote, I have no regrets about how we left Afghanistan. Can we just compare that to our time in the White House? When President Trump, my boss, was in the Oval Office, for four years, Rita, we had no new wars. China was in its box. Mm -hmm. Putin was in his box. Proudest moment in my career was when we walked into the Oval, me and Steve Bannon, and we told the president, this is why the Iran deal, Obama's JCPOA, has to be killed now. And we did that in front of the whole cabinet. And the president said, said, thank you, gentlemen, I am going to pull the plug on Obama's Iran deal. Four years of peace. And then what happens? Along comes what my buddy Dan Bongino calls the rotting bag of oatmeal in the White House. And we have disasters <laughs> in Afghanistan. We have invasion of Ukraine for the second time, because the first time was under Obama. Let's not forget Crimea. And then we have the October 7th massacre in the Middle East. Can we just get President Trump back for, for not just the American people, but for the safety and stability of the world? I like it when we don't have wars in multiple regions of the world. I, I'll vote for that. Oh, well, according to the polls, a lot of other people are going to vote for that as well. And the polls also are showing that Joe Biden's uh, losing support among minorities. Uh, more Hispanic voters are now backing Trump than Biden, uh, according to the latest polls. And even the Democrats' black vote is showing signs of fracturing. Uh, so with all that in mind, have a look at this uh, new campaign ad that has uh, just been released by the president. Let us choose America. Today is a day of call to action with your voice, with your power, with your vote. Come November, we will vote in record numbers. And we can do it. It's within your power to do it. Are you ready? Are you ready to defend democracy? Are you ready to protect our freedom? Are you ready to win this election? Sebastian, looking at the full video, you would think America is a minority white country. Uh, <laughs> the video has Biden visiting a black church, Hispanic families, Asian-owned businesses, shaking hands with people of every skin colour under the sun. Uh, is this a sign Biden White House is really spooked by these polls showing that minorities are turning to Trump? Oh, utterly, utterly. Remember, this is the candidate who said when he was running for the presidency, Biden was on a podcast with a famous black podcaster who said, quote, uh, if you don't vote for me, you ain't black. I mean, this is the bigotry mm. of the Democrats, the party that was responsible for the KKK, the party that was the party of the segregationists, 
That's Joe Biden's Democrat Party. And we now have, I mean, the figures, Rita, you're quoting, are historic. Allegedly, 26% mm. of American black voters are on Donald Trump's side. If that actually pans out in November, the modern Democrat plantation, the political plantation, is busted. The idea that a demographic that has voted for the Democrats for 60 years and gotten nothing is saying, OK, we've woken up, we're going to vote for President Trump, then they will emancipate themselves politically. The Hispanic figures, the Hispanic figures by themselves should spook the Democrats, the party of the minority. But as, you know, as the cool kids say, people are getting red-pilled, and they are getting red-pilled in the tens of millions, and they've had it with a party that panders to them, does nothing for them, and is actually, let's be honest, anti-American.